Whatever happened to our laugh out loud comedians? Why have they become such commodians? <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. During the last decade, and especially during the last four years or so, Comedians, to me, have all seemed to turn from these happy-go-lucky folks that make you laugh at anything and everything, edgy entertainers, into bitter, mean-spirited, haggy people with nothing left to laugh about and nothing but shame, demeaning, or scolding rhetoric. You either get that or some super personal things that would even make their own parents uncomfortable. Now, I know things seem terrible bad right now, but these whiny, screamy, demanding victims in their own mind are not making anything better by doing the opposite of what comedians used to do, which was make us feel better and laugh about things that we couldn't control or could get upset about otherwise. They had the ability to make us laugh about just about anything and literally put things into perspective a lot of times. It's like Led Zeppelin said, does anyone remember laughter? My question is, does anybody remember that supposedly laughter is the best medicine? I think that most comedians now have replaced laughter with big doses of woke bullshit. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know what I think about why. Their fear of irrelevance and not getting any more work in their clique by not getting enough, say it with me now, publicity, eyeballs and clicks, clicks and eyeballs. That's where the money is and the power, baby. Advertisers pay huge money for that type of stuff, but don't get me distracted. Now, these seasoned comedians, <clears throat> commodians, seem as though they are self-appointed dealers of shame, doom and gloom, all complete with bad attitudes and complaints and vitriol to and about everyone and everything. But mostly the folks that made them rich and famous to begin with, their audience. And it wouldn't surprise me if our government entities had a little bit to do with that. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. Most comedians are comedians because of the trials and tribulations they went through as kids or young adults, including being bullied, having diseases, depression, etc. Them becoming comedians was supposedly their way of surviving, but also as a countering measure to the bad things in life, which are really important to survival and character. Come at your problems with a sense of humor, and not only is life not all that bad anymore, but the bad things can be turned into good things with a little humor and humility. But now? I mean, we practically grew up with some of these comedians that today just seem to be total slaves to the system while claiming to be the resistance. What exactly are you resisting? I mean, you have everything anyone could ever ask for or ever dream of, and you have everyone's ear as well. Tell me, will you be happy when everyone just bows down to you and serves your every need? Well, guess what? You will never get that from me, ever. I'm one of those types of people that you either wanna hang out and have a good time, talk about shit, to have a drink, have a dinner, whatever, or you don't. You either want to hang out with me or you don't. You probably wouldn't change your personality to suit me, nor would I want you to, or for anyone else that matters. So why would you demand that of others? Now, to give you an example or two, let me start with the infamous Whoopi Goldberg. I absolutely adored her. She worked with Robin Williams to help with AIDS research. 
She was so, so funny and what a great actress. She went from this. This is my long, luxurious blonde hair. <laughs> Ain't it pretty? Yeah. I could put it in a ponytail, wanna see? Yeah. No. <laughs> and they look at stuff and they go, hmm. And I'm thinking, what? What? I'm whoopy, what? What could you possibly be going, hmm, about? <laughs> Yes, I've had a lot of husbands, but past that, there's not much. And you know, right, all the sisters. We have all the Negroes going on. We like to know. And all the kids. We have all the Negroes gone. They run in big cities, baby. Everyone keeps singing shit. When will they ever learn? OK. When will? Now, I want you to get up. We're going to get up and do it, OK? Okay, follow the bouncing Negro one more time. To this. You know what's hard? What's when, horrible? When the president of the United States whips up cities. people to beat no. the hell out of people. No. Say goodbye. Let me go. I'm gone. Girl, please stop talking. Please stop talking right now. We've sort of felt it a little bit when we've seen other sort of riots break out. and We've seen them bust out troops. But this is different. This feels different. This, this feels different. like a planned attack against the American people. And it's very yeah. specific and it's very targeted. So this guy is, I'm sorry, he's a racist and he's not good for the country. So all of you, suck it up. Suck it up like we sucked it up. And if you are not sure that you're comfortable with Joe Biden, do what we did find things and then take it to the law. And if the law says it's something to look at, look at it. But from <laughs> now on, suck it up. And now she just sounds like a big mouthpiece for the establishment. Here's the thing that I, I do want to say, Megan, because I understand what you're saying. Here's the hope. The hope is that when folks get their vaccines, they continue to wear their masks and they don't start doing stuff before we can do it. Because the biggest problem I think we're gonna have in this country is we have to make sure that everyone wears their masks, gets vaccinated, so that we get to the place where everyone is comfortable enough where you can go do stuff. But I don't wanna go around with people if they're not wearing their masks, especially while we're waiting for the rest of the nation to get vaccinated. So I think we have to get to a place where we're all working towards the same goal, which is the normalcy that we keep talking about that we would like to have. So that's what I think. That's what I, I hope the, the next group of messaging will be, that if we do what we're supposed to do, because look, people are saying there's been no flu. There's been, where's been the flu been? People had their mask on, nobody, very few people got the flu. So there is something to be said for wearing these masks for for the time being. It breaks my heart and it's actually pretty sad that she went from comedy that makes you think to I'm going to tell you what to think. And if you don't agree, or if you have a different idea, even if you do agree, you're a insert adjective here. You all know that drill by now. Now it seems that her only sense of humor stems from mocking someone with a different opinion. And that's not the whoopee I knew and loved. Again, don't forget, I'm not, nor have I ever been, a total fangirl from any of the entertainers that I talk about that have either inspired me, made me laugh, made me cry, or entertained me. I don't profess to, nor do I want to know every little detail about anyone's life for that matter. I've always been a bit busy trying to take care of myself and my own business. I still have trouble with that. So yeah, I've always been too busy to be really into anyone else's life, but don't get me distracted. Right now, these are my opinions and I'm just speaking about my own observations of what I'm seeing and kind of comparing to what I used to see before and what I see now. Remember, I'm coming from a position of someone who stopped watching mainstream television, mainstream anything, for very many years up until the last couple, or up until the last least one. The situations that caused me to have not much else to do but watch the media. So I figured if I was going to have to watch it, why not analyze it? Gotta keep the brain running. But. 
In what I've been seeing, I guess the old saying is true, nothing lasts forever, including one's fandom for funny folks. My second example is going to be someone that we all know and love, or used to anyway. This crazy, funny guy from Canada. He went from zany, crazy, laugh out loud stuff like this. Oh man, but I'm here now. I'm here and I feel good tonight. Really good, excellent, super. I just wanna go, 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 go. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right, that's it. Now it's my turn. Five minutes alone. That's all I need. Come on. I look alive. I'm horns on our way down. Whoa. Oh, 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 no. Ace, please, man, please. What's the matter, Emilio? Afraid I'll make a steak? Okay, okay, look. Thank you for all your cooperation. Somebody stop me. To doing and saying some of the darkest? and most frightening art and commentary I've ever heard, like this. <sighs> that kind of art comes from troubled children, in my opinion. Then he talks like he's some kind of expert on politics and how people should live and such subjects, and now he sounds like just another shill for the establishment. It, yeah. We have to say I'm yes to socialism, to the word and everything. I, I'm, we have to stop apologizing. I, I am, I am, uh, and... So, uh, you know, the, the, the Republicans are running with the word socialism. They're trying to say... They're trying to scare people. Scare it's, people. It's communism. It's Venezuela, like, Trump says. You're, you know we're going to be living in Venezuela. I grew up in Canada, okay? We right. have socialized medicine. And I am, I'm here to tell you that this bullshit line that you get on all of the political shows from people is that it's a failure. The system is a failure in Canada. It is not a failure in Canada. I never waited for anything in my life. I chose my own doctors. My mother never paid for a prescription. It was fantastic. And I just got back from Vancouver. And I keep hearing this, like, Canadians are so nice. Canadians are so nice. They can be nice because they have health care. <laughs> because they have a government that cares about them. Sorry, dude. You should be scared of socialism. It isn't just about socialized medicine. It's about a government entity large enough to choose who wins and who loses in life. And those that end up being the losers lose their freedoms, their ability to support themselves and their families, their families, and eventually their lives. 100 million people being executed and or starved to death should be plenty of proof why you should be scared of socialism. You don't trust the government now. Why do you want to give them full control? I guess he couldn't just imagine having true socialism, real socialism, and then having someone in office which you despise and already think is a greedy dictator. You all claimed he was a dictator, and when he didn't act like one for the Rusty, you started demanding that he become one, and disparaged every breath he took. Imagine if he had been a real dictator. First time you complained about anything, what he was doing, or any of these pictures, you wouldn't be here anymore. And that goes for most of the media, too. But. That's for another video. But again, I think Commodian Carey somehow knew he wouldn't be exempt from the actual oppression that socialism imposes under Donald Trump, if that was going to be the case. I really don't think he actually would be saying things like this if he didn't think he was going to have some position of power or know that it wasn't going to affect him like it affects others. Who would advocate for someone else taking your life over? Also, notice where he lives and gets all of his medical and dental work done. And notice where he became rich and famous. I don't see him rushing back to Canada for any of that. Here's another small example. Look at what we've actually come to when it comes to comedians. Oh, yeah. That's it right there. Pull it up. 
Everybody remembers this, right? Personally, I think Kathy Griffin should have been in the horror films to begin with. She's neither funny nor talented, in my opinion. Her main brand of comedy seemed to be one-upsmanship and poking the bear like a mean girl. The madder you got at her for being a mean girl, the more she liked it and would antagonize more and capitalized on it. That is not comedy. That is antagonistic emotion baiting. However, up to the severed head thing, she at least seemed like the awkward girl next door most times. Sorry, honey, what you did was neither funny nor appropriate. Edgy maybe, but not comedy. Unless, of course, you're evil. But, again, don't get me distracted. I also noticed that when criticism and meanness came her way because of that, which was well-deserved, she couldn't handle it. I'm gonna be honest, he broke me. He broke me. Oh. He broke you? He broke you. KG, dear, you brought this on yourself. One of your fucked up ideas backfired and you and nobody else but you can be blamed. But this is the culture you have culminated. How's that working out for you there, Miss Commodian? Oh, and don't even get me started on Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, this, would, this video would turn into a documentary and we don't want that. However, I will say that the ongoing feud between her and Trump proves to me, once again, the golden rule of entertainment and celebrity. <laughs> After the previous examples, I think you get the idea and the question that I had to begin with. Not to mention the newest generation of comedians, <clears throat> commodians, if you want to call them that. I just call them social lecturers now. No laughing allowed. Of course, unless they're laughing, and then you better laugh, you bigot. Has anyone ever caught Trevor Noah being funny, even accidentally? Even with his studio audience, which seemed to be some type of trained seals as well. Don't tell me y'all don't know about the applause signs that flash during these talk and comedy shows, right? Well, even with his trained seal studio audience, good old Mr. Noah doesn't even get as many views as Tim Pool, and there's nothing funny about Tim Pool. I guess the difference being, in my opinion, that Tim Pool doesn't try to be something he is not. And over the years that I've been watching him, he hasn't changed his stance on his politics, and he doesn't act like he knows everything. And I've never, not once, ever heard him tell someone what to think. He actually tells you to think and to not listen to just him. Although it's hard not to, he's all over the internet. He seems to either stream or post all day, every day, but don't get me distracted. Then there's good old Samantha B, a feminist, calling another woman a feckless, see you next Tuesday, as part of a comedy skit, while insulting her father as well. Yeah, that's really going to endear you to the person you're trying to persuade. And again, why is she not making fun? Why is she demanding something and then trying to pass it off as funny? Hatred is not comedy and it's not funny. And I don't see you tolerating it towards yourself. Folks like you blow up if criticized about any kind of action or sentence or anything. Then there's Chelsea Handler who seems to think she is a handler. Just listen to this. You heard about my ex-boyfriend, right? 50 Cent and his support of of, of uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, what's going on between you? I, I saw your tweets and I go, wait, what's happening? Because you said he was your favorite ex-boyfriend and then he, what does he do? He's supporting Trump? He says he doesn't want to pay 62% of taxes, which by the way, isn't a plan of Joe Biden's. That's, that's, that's a lie. So he doesn't want to pay 62% of taxes because he doesn't want to go from being 50 cents to 20 cents. 
<laughs> and I and I had to remind him that he was a black person, so he can't vote for Donald Trump and that he shouldn't be influencing an entire swath of people who may listen to him because he's worried about his own personal pocketbook. So I haven't heard back from him yet, but I, I am willing to, you know, seal the deal in more ways than one if he changes his mind and publicly denounces Donald Trump. I might be willing to go for another spin, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I would venture to say that he's not interested in another go-round with her. They did break up, and what man would tolerate something like that? What man would tolerate someone telling them that they can't do something because of the color of their skin? If she told me that because I was a woman, I would be just as offended, and I would tell her where she could stick it. So yeah, this commodian, ironically enough, is an expert on black people. Well, I think that throughout this video, you get my point. Comedy is just not funny anymore. Well, at least the newer idea of it anyway. That is why I watch folks like Nick DiPaolo, very NSFW, but so funny. He is today's Lenny Bruce, even to the censorship part that they wanted to impose on him and do. Now, John Cleese is one of my all-time favorite comedians, and he had this to say. He was a renowned psychiatrist in London called Robin Skinner said something very interesting to me. He said, if people can't control their own emotions, then they have to start trying to control other people's behavior. And the whole point about humor, the whole point about comedy, and believe you me, I've thought about this, is that all comedy is critical. Even if you make a very inclusive joke, like um, how do you make God laugh, answer, tell him your plans. Now, that's about the human condition. It's not excluding anyone. It's saying we all have all these plans which probably won't come, and isn't it funny how we still believe they're going to happen? So that's a very inclusive joke. It's still critical. All humor is critical. And if you start saying, oh, we mustn't, we mustn't criticize or offend them, then humor's gone. With humor goes a sense of proportion. And then as far as I'm concerned, you're living in 1984. So now, I think you all get the message and the idea, if you're still here. I'm portraying here, and the question that I asked at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to leave this video right here. Let me know in the comments who are your favorite non-woke, non-woke comedians. Uh, I love to find new talent, to, to, new, to new to me anyway. And I need new sources of humor right now, because even as positive of a person as I am, I get overwhelmed by the amount of one-sided hate, vitriol, and accusations that village idiots have been allowed to spew while passing it off as comedy. As their followers and supporters believe their words are sacred. Now, I must rest my brain, because all of this comedy has worn me out. I do hope that you enjoyed my video today. If you'd like to see me continue this work, please help me out by liking, subscribing, commenting, and what will get me the most attention and get my goal faster of being a call-in talk show is share, share, share. Share this video and share all my other videos. A donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out unique trinkets for any donation. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!